Ever wondered why giraffes have such long necks? It's an intriguing question, isn't it? This towering trait of giraffes has long sparked curiosity and debate among biologists and animal enthusiasts alike. The length of a giraffe's neck isn't just a fascinating feature, it's a question of survival, adaptation, and the very principles that govern life on Earth. Now, there are two major theories that strive to answer this question, the theory of evolution and Lamarckism. The theory of evolution made famous by Charles Darwin suggests the concept of survival of the fittest. On the other hand, Lamarckism, proposed by Jean-Baptiste Lamarck, believes in the inheritance of acquired traits. So which of these theories holds the secret to the giraffe's long neck? Is it the survival of the fittest that led to this adaptation over generations? Or is it the inheritance of traits acquired during a giraffe's lifetime that got passed down? Is it the survival of the fittest or the inheritance of acquired traits that gave the giraffe its long neck? Let's explore further. Darwin's theory of evolution proposes a survival-based explanation. At its core, this theory is about change over time, guided by the process of natural selection. Picture a world filled with diverse species, each struggling for existence, competing for resources. In this world, individuals with traits best suited to their environment are more likely to survive and reproduce. This is what we call survival of the fittest. Now let's consider giraffes. In the harsh landscapes of Africa, food can be scarce, but those giraffes with longer necks could reach the succulent leaves high up in the trees, a food source out of reach for many other animals. These long-necked giraffes were more likely to survive in lean times, and thus, more likely to pass on their genes to the next generation. Over countless generations, this led to giraffes developing their iconic long necks. So, according to evolution, the giraffe's long neck is a result of survival advantage. Lamarck, on the other hand, had a different idea. This French biologist proposed a theory, now known as Lamarckism, that focused on the idea of inheritance of acquired traits. Picture it this way. Imagine a giraffe stretching its neck day after day, year after year, to reach for food on the higher branches. According to Lamarck, this constant stretching would eventually lead to a longer neck. But the key element of Lamarck's theory is not just about the giraffe acquiring a longer neck in its lifetime. He believed that this long neck, a trait acquired through the giraffe's constant stretching, could be passed on to its offspring. In other words, the giraffes we see today have long necks because their ancestors stretched their necks, and this trait was inherited by the subsequent generations. Lamarck's theory suggests that giraffes have long necks because their ancestors stretched their necks and passed on this trait. So who's right, evolution or Lamarckism? Well, it's not quite as clear-cut as picking one over the other. Both theories offer interesting perspectives on the giraffe's long neck. Evolution suggests that over countless generations, giraffes with longer necks had a survival advantage, thus passing on these traits to their offspring. On the other hand, Lamarckism proposes that giraffes stretched their necks to reach higher leaves, and this acquired characteristic was then inherited by the next generation. Modern science, however, tends to lean more towards the theory of evolution. This is largely due to the extensive evidence supporting genetic inheritance and the process of natural selection. But that's not to say Lamarckism is entirely dismissed. Some aspects of it, particularly the idea of use and disuse of traits, still find resonance in certain aspects of biological research. While the debate continues, one thing remains certain. The giraffe's long neck is a fascinating study in biology.